bass mid treble, everything is flat there. We're okay. playing our test tone. We're all the way up. All the way up on the head unit. And, and we have our scope is looking like. Hey everyone, today I wanted to talk to you about digital preamp adapters. Sometimes when I talk to clients about preamp adapters, they look at me like I have two heads. They don't know what I mean by that. So I thought it would be a good idea to explain what a preamp adapter is and why it's a good thing to use if you want to upgrade the stereo in your car and keep the factory head unit. That's the key reason that we use preamp adapters. A lot of newer vehicles, you really can't change the radio. So if you want to upgrade the sound, you may be forced to do a digital sound processor, piggyback that after the stock amplifier, you're summing all of the frequencies when you do that and you're double processing it, right? You're trying to smooth out and correct what that factory amp is doing, but it's still there. It's still part of the equation. What a preamp adapter does is it allows us to catch that signal before it gets processed by that stock amplifier. And there's a lot of different brands of these adapters on the market. I was first introduced to these back in 2009 I had a 2009 BMW 335XI that had the Logic 7, which is the top hi-fi BMW audio system that's offered. And, you know, if you look through these diagrams, you can see the S676 package, the regular hi-fi or the base audio package. In those cars, you had like a, a low level signal. You could really just make your own RCAs and tap right into that to go to aftermarket amp and speakers. But if you had the top hi-fi that signal see an orange wire that is fiber optic so it was fiber optic completely digital until it got to that stock logic 7 amplifier so i we had no choice but to go after the amp and we can never really get that car to sound right you know sometimes it would sound good but if i had the volume at a certain level it didn't sound good or if i was going over a certain speed the sound would change and that was all because of the processing that was going on in that factory amplifier it didn't matter that we put all this nice equipment in there. That stock amp was still in there, doing its thing, messing everything up for me. I was really happy when I found out that Mobridge, an Australian company, made a preamp adapter for my car, which allowed us to catch that signal right before the stock amp while it was still fiber optic, and their product converted that signal to RCA, or now you can keep it digital and go toss link out. One of the most popular ones that we use here at the shop is this pack amp pro module this is the ap4 ch41 r2 that we use in so many of our jeep installations pack has this for a whole slew of different year makes and model vehicles from jeep dodge ram chrysler ford lincoln toyota lexus some gm models and they're always working on coming out with new ones because you really can't change the stereo in a lot of these newer cars now, at first glance, you might think that this is just a fancy line output converter because you have this T harness, right, that goes behind the radio. And this plugs into here and gives you RCAs. So, you know, it looks like it's a line output converter, but it's not. In those cars specifically, what's kind of cool is you don't necessarily have to have the stock premium stereo to do this. The AP4 CH41 R2 in particular can be used in select non-amplified models, and the same goes for the NAV-TV Zen V. In most vehicles, a preamp adapter will only work if the car is already equipped with a stock premium stereo, where the signal out from the radio to the stock amp is digital. However, there are some preamp adapters in some cars where the factory head unit can actually be reprogrammed to accept the preamp adapter. Examples of this include the 2018 and up Jeep Wrangler or 2013 and up Ram with the 8.4 inch Uconnect screen using the pack adapter and then select Audi models with the NavTV Zen V. In those applications, what the Amp Pro module is doing is reprogramming the head unit to think it's in a car with a premium stock amp. That actually switches the output of the stock stereo from analog to digital. Then the preamp adapter can hijack and redirect that clean digital signal that hasn't been processed yet into our aftermarket equipment. The pack module does this reprogramming through sleep cycles, whereas the NAV TV requires a separate OBD2 programmer. This isn't an option for all vehicles. Most of the time you're gonna need to have a car that's already equipped with the stock premium sound for this to work, but it's definitely worth looking into. It's possible you may have one of these vehicles that can actually be reprogrammed. 
Usually we're trying to do this in cars where you have a factory premium amp. Those are the ones that have a digital signal before it gets to the stock amp and you can interrupt it while it's still digital. If you have a non-amplified vehicle, so if you have a Lexus that doesn't have the Mark Levinson system, for example, the audio signal may not be digital and you may still have to go, you know, analog, sum all the frequencies coming off of that factory radio before you go into your amp for DSP. But if you're lucky, there may be a preamp adapter available that will let you get that clean five volts or four volt, depending what adapter you're using, preamp signal coming right from the factory head unit. You can use the factory volume controls. It's awesome. And if you want to go toss link, like with the pack module, they, they offer an adapter so you can go toss link. It's a little circuit board that you have to install. And we have one installed in here. It was in our vehicle before we changed the radio. You can keep it digital and go into any processor that accepts your toss link connection or right into an amplifier. Like we have the V8 DSP amp from Helix in our vehicle and it's so clean. There's no noise when you go digital like that. You just have to make sure you have enough power on your amplifier and, and good processing on there to get that great sound quality. I gotta say I'm all about value. So one thing I love about these Amp Pro modules is they actually come with a remote bass knob. And this is a nice small bass knob. So this is the type that you can actually take apart and easily install in a vehicle so that all you see is the knob itself. I really like that. I like using this bass knob as opposed to one that comes with an amplifier because we can get a little bit more creative with where we mount it in the vehicles. We recently had the opportunity to test how clean this actually is with our VMRTA and we're gonna show you at what point the factory head unit clips when you're using one of these. It's, it's very clean. It's, it's very similar to having an aftermarket head unit. Check it out. Recently, a viewer, Mitchell Williams, asked me about had we tested the AP4 CH41R2 to see if it was clean. There it is right there. We're doing this install in a non-amplified Jeep. The module's already been programmed. It's set to five volts. We checked on the head unit and we got everything set flat for Base trouble in mid. Basement trouble, everything is flat there. We're okay. playing our test tone. We're all the way up 38 feet, whatever it is. All the way up on the head unit. And, and we have our scope is looking like five volts. It's a little it looks a little, little clipped. Off. We'll just go back down. There we go. Back what down volume are we at? 37. So 37 on the head unit is clean when you're using the pack module and you're getting 4.23 volts with the module actually set to five volts. Yep. And that's on the front. If we switch it to the sub. So now we're doing the 40 Hertz test tone. It's five volt setting. All right, so with Wait, the- But that's at one kilohertz, remember? No, I switched it oh, to the 40, it? Hits, her 40 Hertz test tone. Let's go back so to that. So if we have, yeah, 40, 40 hertz, hertz, zero dB, yeah, and the volume's yeah. at 37, you said? It is at 37. 37 on there. And you're getting 4.52 4. 4. peak debt, 4.56. And then what is the scope. signal? That's 38. Yeah, so, so at it 38, it starts to clip on both the front and the rear and the sub. 37 is, is clean. Good to know. So if you are using the pack AP4CH41R2, you are getting between four to four point five volts. Which is great. Yeah, which is just like really having an aftermarket head yeah. unit. And you just don't want to put the volume past thirty seven or you'll start to clip that signal. Yeah, For the record, that was with the base knob all the way try up. Try something real quick. Let me go to thirty eight. Let me go to the scope. Let me yeah, back still clip on this a little bit. Well, a little bit. So if you lower the bass knob a little bit, but nobody lowers the bass knob. Yeah, but let me see what kind of voltage you get. Let me see if I can change it. Anyhow. This is the same stuff I do. It's so funny. I do the same as that stuff. I'm like, let it's me try this. Let me try this. Yeah, it's the same thing. It just lowers it. Yeah. Lowers the threshold. But just assume that people are going to turn the bass knob all the way up. That's what I assume. That's it. They're going to do it. Because it clipped at 38 with the one kilohertz test tone. Yes. Yeah. So that should be your cutoff. Don't go past 37. I hope that helps. If you're interested in getting a preamp adapter for your vehicle and you want to check compatibility, check out pack-audio.com, navtv.com, 
mobridge.us. Those are just a few of the companies out there that make these adapters. Coming up, things I am working on. The DMX 958XR versus DMX 908S full review. Also a couple installation videos that you guys should look out for. Full audio system upgrade in a 2022 Audi S4 using the NavTV Zen preamp adapter with a couple of Helix amplifiers and DSP. That's a good one. And also this mint 1991 Mazda Miata. This car looks so clean on the outside. Even the seats and the interior are super clean except for the radio, it was pretty janky. Under the steering column, there was a rat's nest of an alarm system in there, and we got that cleaned up. That was a fun one. So if you guys enjoy this content, please hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.